There is something student leaders from the coast eat. We had Hassan Omari here in Moi University. Mm. You ha you've come after Hassan Omar. I think Hassan Omar at that time had declared all cows wild animals and instructed students to slaughter and eat. <laughs> <laughs> the politics of one man, by one man, for one man. <laughs> December, December. But Moi University was a city in the forest, 35 kilometers away from the nearest biggest town, Eldoret. We had the Dean of Students, who is considered by most students and student leaders as some witty guy. David Muraidi, Dean Muraidi. There was only one Dean in Moi University. There will only be one Dean in Moi University. There will never be another Dean in Moi University. I, I know the Dean David Muraidi left. He was a convergence of so many talents in one person. Why so? I like Dean Muraidi, though I differed with him sharply. He would even tell me, Chairman, there is something student leaders from the coast eat. We had Hassan Omari here in Moi University. Mm. You ha you've come after Hassan Omar. I think Hassan Omar at that time had declared all cows wild animals and instructed students to slaughter and eat. <laughs> <laughs> then he reminded me, mm. we had Mwandapiro Muganga. Mm. Now this one comes from your tribe, Taita. Mm. Radical. And he would talk to me about the essence of leadership from very many perspectives. Mm -hmm. He will tell me, he will tell me first and foremost, a leader is to help people cross whatever bridge. In that case, for us, let students graduate and so forth. Mm -hmm. Let there be peace. He will even tell me about for every entry there is an exit. When you are entering something, did you think about the exit strategy? Did you think now you have called uh, that morning when I had summoned the entire university? Mm -hmm to a dress down of the chief security officer. At that time, summoned all the university leaders present to tell comrades why people are being hacked. Dean Muraidi was whispering me, Chairman, have you thought about exit plan? What if it goes nasty? Always think of exit. But Dean Muraidi managed students with rare wit. I don't even think it came from his many years in the university, no. Mm. That man should be documented. It's a talent, perhaps God-given. He is, he is some sort of Messi, mm. some sort of Lionel Messi in, a, in, 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 a, in, a, in, in you know, administering student leaders. Dean Mraithi knew how to create and thwart discord. Mm. He knew where to plant a splinter opinion and where to plant a counter in the student leadership and even in the students because the university is a corporate. There are so many competing interests. Lecturers, university administration, mm -hmm. villagers, workers of the university, students with their tribes and religions and genders and age groups and everything. Mm -hmm. Muraidi somehow knew the ring leaders of every group, and he knew how to speak to them. Muraidi was great. Mm. Dean Muraidi was great. I differed with him, but I liked him. I differed with him on some things. Of course, given my age then, mm. I was boiling with the, the hot blood of youth. Hubris of a politician who has just discovered the apex of, of what it can mean to be a student leader, chairman of a uni big university. But Muraidi will teach me, chairman, sometimes you compromise, sometimes you cooperate, sometimes you avoid. Which strategy are you using at which time? Mm -hmm. Dean Muraidi, 
was the dean is the dean will be the dean dean muraidi david mwenje muraidi i don't know whether you know this student leaders who came after you had left most of them had drawn their inspiration from you we had the likes of uh, the late mwalimu dogana florence dogana exactly we had uh, the likes of eric naga in fact for him i think he was hellbent to ensure that he reached your level to the extent that by the time he was leaving office he was still a darling to students though he can't reach your legendary status we had the likes of dikembe dikembe december that guy was something else i don't know what happened to him but dikembe when he was vying for the post of secretary general he was very unknown many people didn't given give him even time you, to speak you you yeah dikembe december and then he he launched that sentence main campus when the noise goes down when the noise <laughs> goes down <laughs> i remember the first is, was it called crossfire yeah there was a crossfire in an enclosed amphitheater yeah, and exactly. there was a kamkunji in the open air so the first crossfire he was there he had some long hair some guy with some long hair afro yeah and a small body he spoke and people didn't give him much attention but when we had now the kamkunji he was speaking pointing to the office of muraidi and saying main campus when that noise comes down the politics of one man by one man for one man <laughs> december december anyway uh florence dogana yeah became chairman just after me exactly i can go lyrical about dogana and december december they were very close to me mm-hmm. but there are some things i will never forget about florence dogana number one, he had a very t- tough time at the crossfire and i had a, i had attended that crossfire mm. and when he invoked my name students looked behind and saw me seated with them and i had just entered and announced and dogana said the chairman is seated with us he was responding to a question which had been held at him you know florence dogana had competed against me mm. and at the very tail end of our race dogana had said comrades i surrender i, I surrender to this man mwamburi mwangombe let him be let him go i have quit my ambition as the chairman though i think he was eventually in the ballot box so at that crossfire when i'm calling it a day and dogana is contesting a student asks him a very creative student dogana when mwamburi mwangombe looked indomitable you surrendered how sure are we that you will not surrender when it gets very hot up there when I remember that chairman. question do you remember do you remember I, that I, I question don't, i don't know if i can put a face to the to the person to who the asked person i can't remember the question i can't remember the person who asked the question i remember the question mm. but how dogana responded to the question is what i will never forget he said i'm honorable enough and he used to address us as children of god yeah children of god I'm honorable and brave enough to finish a war I begin. But I'm also intelligent enough to know that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Mm. Of course quoting Jean Francois v- Voltaire, that French thinker. The voice of the people vox populi, vox dei. The voice of the people is the voice of God. At that time comrades Who was the comrade's choice of chairman? Dog- Dogana no. asks. Mm. He asks the, the entire gathering of the university. Comrades, I'm not a coward. I'm brave, but I'm also intelligent. I know the voice of the people is the voice of God. As it were, the voice of comrades was one Mwamburi Mwangombe. Who was I to stand between comrades and their choice? And that's how he shifted 
That's how he shifted his up to that time unpopular bid and it turned overnight. Eric Kinaga is one of the student leaders I will never forget. Though a bit far from my time, I remember him for a number of episodes to quote to. He spoke during the inauguration of first years, the vice chancellor's inauguration, mm -hmm. Professor Richard Mibei that time, who spoke on behalf of first, all first years of Moe University, Eric Kinaga. But after that, he would ask me, he would visit me, we will see, we will, we will sit with him in between the hostels, at times we will sit between Hostel H and J, at times we will sit between F and E, at times between B and A, at times at the, you know, anywhere in Moe University. And he will tell me that he is impressed by my philosophy of leadership. That power is on the ground with the people down there. So I think that's how Kinaga, of course, by choice, became a darling of students. And years later, after I'd left university, I would, I would get wind of Kinaga is that student leader who has never fallen out with students. They wish he could contest again. And I'm proud of such. Mm -hmm. But everybody to his elements. There's Florence Dogana, rest in peace. A person whose potential was a mystery. And I believe he has gone silent with a lot. Yeah. So I don't know whether you heard of this. Immediately you people left and uh, Dogana's reign came to an end. There's a lot that came in. And at that time we had a grand coalition of student leaders. Did you hear about yeah, that? I, Where I, we had the likes of George Bush and Boit. Kipsaro Arab Boit. Yes. Kipsaro Arab Boit is one of my favorites after I, I left Camp Ups. Perhaps for the simple reason that he used to consult me a lot. He, he used to tell me when I, I never believed. He used to tell me, chairman, I'll become a chairman like you. And then he will ask me, Kipsaro Boit is very swift in relationships and eloquent at expression. Mm. I would point to his abilities and assure him that as a father of all comrades, they liked calling me Baba. As, as a father of all comrades, you have my blessing, but your zeal gives you even more blessing and we shared a platform with kipsaro arab boit just mm -hmm. like with my secretary general okeri orina both of us were seventh day adventists so i would see the seriousness of kipsaro in our conversations mm -hmm. even during church break and such like things and i'm told that when we left i think it was the third generation of leadership after mine yeah I think, yeah, yes. Mwamburi's regime, then Dogana, then Kipsaro's and so forth. Yeah. I'm told that the animosity had become so high between two of my favorites again, people yeah. I had left at, you know, at Cradle, at toddler stage of campus politics, uh, Bush, economist Bush, yes. George Bush, yeah. and Kipsaro. I'm told it was a neck-to-neck -neck battle. And again, I think it, is, it, it must be Muraidi's, Muraidi's wit, which, which I, I really don't, I'm not privy to what happened, but I know that ground coalition government where there was a prime something and yeah. the chairman. Yeah. Kipsaro Harap Boit having been declared the chairman, but uh, Bush, Bush and his team, you know, also forced it. And there were claims of election rigging and so forth. I really don't know whether there was such a thing because I, was, I had left campus then. Yeah. But I heard that. And I think those times of Kina Celeb Kenga, the student leader Celeb Kenga, you knew him? Yeah. The times of Bush. 
the times of Arab Boit were towards the very end of a certain brand of campus politics. They were at the very verge of a certain style of campus politics, I think. Mm. So um, I, I, I heard of that. I know of that grand coalition. I think I could have been called once. I may have been called here and there to say a word, I think, to, to one of them. But it's not very clear in my mind. But both of them are well known to me and their entire cabinet. There was nobody new in, in, in their governments. Yeah, there are people we had interacted with maybe when they were still first year or second year or something like that. Given that you are a student leader, you had to interact with um, other student leaders from other universities. What would you say was the difference between the kind of politics in Moi University and other universities? Setting. Setting. Moi University is a city in the bush. Other major universities are cities in cities. The University of Nairobi is at the core of Nairobi town, Kenyatta University, JQuat, all of them access the city. But Moi University was a city in the forest, 35 kilometers away from the nearest biggest town, Eldoret. And that was therefore a laboratory for ideology. Because those who studied there, I'm a bit biased, must have busied themselves with books. And you may, you may want to call the politics of Moi University organic because it attracted ideologues. It attracted people with either unique abilities or an interesting urge like I had. It attracted very eloquent people like the late Dogana, my friend Okeri Orina, who was the Secretary General, very eloquent people, very flamboyant and fluent with words. It also attracted people who may not have been as eloquent, but whose push was as large as the eloquence. And so that type of a setting predisposed or conditioned the politics of Moi to ideology. And I consider student leadership in Moi University harrowing and unique compared to these other uh, university leaderships which were privy to cities and privy to politicians. Our time, there were rumors of people being sponsored by major politicians of the country when I, I contested, but I never got support from any politician. But we know that it has been said student leaders in universities around cities mm -hmm. easily attract money from, Politician. from politicians. And I think that is one serious point of departure between campus politics in Moi vis-a-vis -vis other universities. And as you've said elsewhere, the politics of Moi University were organic. People listened to ideas. And that's how, uh, that's, that's how Momburi Mwangombe Ataita, a very small tribe in the coast, would defeat candidates who thought they could ride on money and large tribes. That's how likes of Florence Dogana could at the very last minute twist the entire university with the pinch of his eloquence, with the substance of his argument. That's how likes of Munglu Dikembe, as he calls himself nowadays, but we knew him as Dikembe December. With one statement, he threw the entire university to a frenzy. When the noise goes down, main campus, main campus, when the noise goes down, that's when we will end the politics of one man by one man for one man. At that time, pointing at the office of the Dean of Students. Yeah. So I think that's the difference of, of the university, of more universities, politics, and other universities. There was no much influence from without. We were not mesmerized by the pleasures of the city. What drove us? 
was the instinct of a fighter, of a soldier, striving against a very harsh and cold environment that ad adorned the, you know, Moy and its vicinity. Ideology, organic setting, that's what set apart our politics from politics. Uh, my friends, Akinababo, we know that time he was the chairman of the University of Nairobi. My, my friend from Kenyatta University that time was forgotten. I've started forgetting some names. But th that was the difference. Yeah. We, we were soldiers from a bush. And we fought with valor. Yeah. The current crop of, poly, of uh, leaders in universities are somehow different because the university politics has changed. Universities somehow have come up with ways of controlling the student unions. Currently, I understand for leaders to be elected, they are elected through delegates who are selected by students. So students do not vote directly. What is your opinion in this kind of leadership? I don't like it. I, I like crude power. The direct vote. Direct mandate. All sovereign power belongs to the people. You know, that's the entry to our constitution. All sovereign power belongs to the people. And they can exercise these powers in two ways. Either directly or through their representatives to whom they delegate this power. And so I consider that type of, you know, leadership, I don't think whether it's weak, but it's too different and alien to me. I would not prefer it during my time. I would want it crude, bare knuckles. Go and harvest the vote from the ground because power is on the ground. But I know the world is mutating. The world seems to be tending towards one colossal compromise. It seems like survival now depends on ability to adapt to newness. You can no longer be very pronounced on either ends. You need some sort of a compromise, a mutation as I've called it. And this tendency, I, I see it creeping into almost all institutions, including marriage, schools, even politics. Now we, 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 we think of things like coalitions. We, we no longer have those alpha husbands who used to shout instructions at their wives. We, we no longer have those discipline masters, the deputy head teachers, whose presence could cause helter skelter in schools. We now have circumstances where you have to sweet talk your child to a discipline in session. Democracy is, is, is overreaching. Democracy is entrenching everywhere. Yet I think we will do better to go back to our roots and have student leaders who sit in council voted directly by students. In the long run, it is good for society. For expediency and convenience, people are forgiven to think that such type of leaders are Habingers for instability. Mm. But I want a country which tolerates diverse, creative, different opinions. This eventually unravels as something which is really, really good for family, for governance, for the corporate world, for everything. We want people who can speak their opinions. We want people who can be allowed to make mistakes hmm. and thereafter learn from the mistakes. If I became a leader today, you can be sure I am very layered. I will be a concussion of very many things. 
because I have been to the ground. I've been to the mountaintop, as Luther says. And I've seen a cross. I now know that I will not reach the next mountaintop without going through a depression. You can only go to the next mountaintop having gone through a depression. And I've therefore known the waves of life, the oscillations. But this would not have been possible if I'd been elected chairman of Mo University students from nowhere. Mm. At a, a, a poor Taita, small tribe, no money. I've told you I was in a class which had only seven literature, only seven major. We only had seven literature majors during my time. So I was even coming from a small class. I was coming from the School of Arts and there were battles those times. There was a School of Engineering, School of Medicine, School of uh, Human Resource and Corporate Communication, School of Information Sciences, School of Environmental Sciences and School of Education. All those had their jingoisms and nationalisms around causes and so forth. But I swam against the tide. I raced against the wave and captured the imagination of students. You know, this stirred in me an urge which if it does not propel me to greatness, then those looking at me are persuaded about possibilities. Therefore, I advocate the organic vote, the crude vote. Let, let, let students, leaders, and even leaders not be voted by collegiates. Colleges, you call them? Yeah, de delegates. Delegates, yeah, delegates. I really, I, I, would not, I would not be very happy if we had a president who has been elected by some 50 Kenyans <laughs> instead of one elected by millions of Kenyans. I consider the sovereign, the crude, the best uh, highway to, to governance and leadership. And uh, since the country has been very dependent on student leaders who later become national leaders, do you think this will affect our future leadership? It must. Catchment is very crucial to any institution. And if you look at Kenya as an institution or Kenya as a person, you are a product of your catchment, where you harvest your nutrients. What do you eat? What do you read? What do you listen to? What do you watch? Eventually, the Ronald Makagak seated in front of me is a product of the breakfast he took in the morning and so forth. And so if you eat mediocrity, mm -hmm. we can only have a bundle of faceless, spineless, headless, tailless characters in the end. We speak of student leaders, the Orengos, the Mondabiro Mugangas, the Aaron Cheriots, you know, the Babu Owinos, and, and many, many other major national leaders who have gone through student leadership. Even the current president was a leader of, in, in the University of Nairobi and such like things. Mm -hmm. I think that cutting edge was sharpened by the very brutal, harrowing, heart-wrenching characteristic of campus politics. It brought out the best in a person and persuaded you mm. that you can go full throttle to the apex of leadership. So I think it will eventually, it will eventually affect. But the world, I find the world having a way of adjusting itself to whatever is presented to it. Mm -hmm. So we will have systems, you know, as, as alpha leaders keep reducing, systems keep coming up. You, you no longer want to be protected by crude muscle power. Now we have functioning security apparatus which can protect you. Mm -hmm. You no longer need to be worried by somebody invading you and so forth. We have institutions the, the world is growing, the country is growing. So maybe we don't need to claim that there is no culture of student leadership. All we need to know mm. is that even that which we may call lack of culture or cultureless is still culture. It is the culture relevant for this dispensation, for this generation. 
Yeah, so I think I differ, I don't like it, but it's the product of this era. And every era with its elements. Yeah. Will we soon see Mwamburi joining active national politics? Active national politics. Ask again. I, I hear people ask that question a number of times. Please ask again. What did you just say? You want to see me where? I'm asking, will I ever see Mwamburi being either the MP of his constituency or an MP in one of the major cities in, in Kenya? FET. I, I, I don't know where the arc of FET will bend me towards, but I'm loyal to whatever tides come in my way. It's expected of me to have become a politician already. You know, I've invoked names of schoolmates, classmates, mm. fellow literati like Aaron Cheriot, you know, the current senator of Kericho, a top politician in the country. Mm. We have Babu Owino. We have my friend from Chepalungu. We call him Mandazi. <coughs> He's now an MP of Chepalungu. Mm. We have very many people who have joined national politics. But I think I'm a victim of my circumstances. I come from a, a very poor family. I could be one of the very few mm. meaningfully employed taitas in my village. Mm. And then I became average, like all human beings are, most human beings are, and got into the family way. Once you get into family, you are redefined, you are rewritten. I feel like I've been rewritten. I'm not sure I'll be a politician anytime soon because I'm obsessed with the daily bread of my daughters. Mm. My daughter's Mukabesu wants to eat. The second born Mukabili wants school fees. The third born Machocho wants a pair of shoes. I think these existentialist realities mm. are my Achilles heel. They have somehow exposed me to an ordinary life, the beaten path. I can no longer dare the unbeaten path. As a parent, I want the certain, the known. But don't, who knows, people like you are likely to, to tempt me because I keep hearing many characters tell me what are you waiting for don't you think you are just scared because whatever you're saying these kids can still get this if you get into politics and moreover the friends that you've mentioned also got into politics and they have families you've defeated me there <clears throat> you've you've really defeated me i think there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Perhaps what you, you, you could ask is whether I am best only at politics. Maybe I'm good elsewhere. Though I'm very known for being a legendary student leader, mm. by the way, Moi University owes me a street. <laughs> Moi University owes me a street. Without doubt. The, the night I fought with Peter Mashoka, mm. that street was named Mwamburi Street. Mm. I, 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 should, I should find a way of visiting Moi University and seeing whether they have put a placard called Mwamburi Street. Mm. But that notwithstanding, I'm good. I know I can be very good at politics expression because of my messianic tendencies mm. arbitrating and being the bridge amidst children of god as the late dogana used to call us mm. I, i'll be good in politics 
but I'm not sure I'll head there. Because of my circumstances as I've attempted to narrate, I have a family. I'm now given to the worries of every parent. Mm. Watakula nini leo? Watakula nini kesho? Hofu yangu sasa ni wanangu. Mm. Istoshe wanangu wa kike. Wewe unajua uhusiano wa mabinti na baba zao. Mm. Kila siku una hofu. Nikijiingiza kwa yale mawimbi ya siasa ambayo hayatabiriki itakuwaje. But as, as you've said, I have friends who got into politics. Now let's keep praying. Mm. The Lord will, will guide us. Yeah, the Lord will, will guide us, surely. If you see me in politics, please know that's my field. If you see me elsewhere, it could also be my unknown field. Mm. Yeah. What is your last word to aspiring student leaders? Student leadership is a debt with the devil. It is slippery and lonely. Mm. And even messy to quote one of our prominent leaders. You are put at a crossroads, at a junction of things. You are a student, number one. But you are a politician who represents a very vibrant, versatile, dynamic constituency mm-hmm. called students of university, people with brains and in their numbers. And among other things, at their most productive, vibrant age, youth. As a student leader, therefore, you become a rich, young ruler and rarely have these attributes combined in a person without destroying the person. You are also being pressed by other interests, university top management, who always think you are a mad person, hell-bent at closing the university, destroying infrastructure. You are like a spirit in tatters, given to all forces and winds as a student leader. You are exposed to battles of parenting, arbitrating for students in in Senate Disciplinary Committee, in the full Senate, discussing issues of policy and how they'll affect students deciding very crucial things as to whether students should stop eating at point A and start eating tomorrow. Exposed to millions of papers to write and papers to read as a student. Mm. My advice to aspiring student leaders is let them gauge their metal. Let them be sure of their persuasion. Let them be persuaded that they want to stand in arbitration between the forces I've mentioned. Mm. And if they are sure, if the tyranny within them says yes, let them go for it. It is a sweet platform. Once you've been to it, you can never be average, even if you wish. You can only keep going higher and better.